This lesson deals with the solution of exam three. You can find this exam solution near the end of the EC201 ebook. This exam was a four problem test with each problem being worth 25 points. This is the actual exam I used when I taught the course recently. Based on the average and standard deviation, this was the curve for exam three. 85 to 100 was an A, 70 to 84 was a B, 55 to 69 a C, 40 to 54 a D, and less than or equal to 39 an F. I'll also explain how to grade the exam with partial credit. The first problem had non-inverting amplifier embedded in a circuit with a five volt source. We're trying to find the current in the 2K load. Now we've developed models for the inverting, non-inverting, and differential amplifier basic structures, and so let's put the model in for this. Let me call this node voltage here V sub X. So whatever voltage is applied here, what's going to show up here is one plus the resistor ratio. That's going to be one plus three or four. So I've replaced the op amp in the yellow box by its model or equivalent circuit. The voltage V sub X then is just a voltage divider with the 3K and the 4K. So it'd be 4K over 3K plus 4K times the five volts, and that's 2.857 volts. Then multiply that by four, and that'd be the voltage here and the current that flows then would be that voltage divided by 2K. So four times 2.857 divided by 2K is the value of the current, and that's 5.71 milliamps. I broke this down into two pieces in the grading, made this worth seven points and this worth eight points. And they were just right or wrong. The second circuit for problem one, shown here, it's an op-amp circuit with a feedback resistor. I want to model this circuit. I was replace this by the parts that we're using in ECE 201. Well, since there's zero volts here and zero current, then the current I sub S sees zero volts back to ground. We could mimic that with a short circuit. The current actually comes in and goes through here back to ground, but as far as I sub S goes, it doesn't know the difference. Still have zero volts here. The voltage across the feedback resistor then would be equal to the current I sub S flowing in here times the resistor R sub F. So if we go around this loop then, the output voltage is a minus RF times I sub S plus zero. Since this is a voltage controlled voltage source, or you could put any load you want here except a short, and the voltage doesn't change, we don't have a Thevenin resistance. So we just have a constant voltage here whose value is a minus RF times I sub S. This model is worth 10 points. Gave five points for the short circuit and five points for the controlled source. And this is problem number one. Problem number two, it gave you a graph of the voltage across the capacitor versus time, and asked if you could calculate the current in the capacitor and the power absorbed. And doing this in terms of a graph, and to also label any levels that you have, maximums and minimums. All right, the current in the capacitor is C dV dt. So let's calculate the slope of the voltage across the capacitor. That would be the rise over the run, so I have a rise here of 10 volts and a run of two milliseconds. And so that'd be 5,000 volts per second. Slope here is changing five volts in one millisecond, but it's a decreasing, so minus five kilovolts per second, and then a slope of zero. The current is equal again to C dV dt. So since I now know the slope and the value of the capacitor, I can now multiply those two together. So five microfarads times 5,000 volts per second, and I get a constant 25 milliamps. Just a straight line across out to two milliseconds. Slope changes, becomes negative. So I multiply the slope again by the capacitance, I get a minus 25 milliamps. And so the current is jumping instantaneously from one value to another, and it can do that, just that the voltage can't do that. Then we stay at this value, and then eventually our slope goes to zero. And so zero times the capacitance is just zero. This is worth five points, this is worth five points, and this is worth five points. All right, now can you calculate the power absorbed? Well, this is the voltage times the current, so now I have both of those. But in this case, the voltage is changing with time, and I've got a constant for the current. So I'm simply gonna multiply this slope by really a scalar. Point zero, I've got zero times 25 milliamps, that's zero, and then at this point, I've got 10 volts, and I've got a current of 25 milliamps. Then the product of those two would be 250 milliwatts. So I can calculate this point, and calculate this point, and just connect it with a straight line. Do the same for the next interval. I've got a constant current here, but the voltage was equal to 10 volts. So 
So I'll multiply those two and I have a minus 250 milliwatts now at this point. And again, I've got a straight line behavior. And so I'm just multiplying that by a constant. So at this point, I'm gonna multiply those two values. So I've got minus 25 milliamps again, but now the voltage has dropped to five volts above. That gives me a minus 125 milliwatts at this point. So it's a straight line between the two of them. And for this last segment, I've got zero current. So then I've got zero current times five volts, which is zero watts. Okay, five points for this and five points for this. And this is problem number two. For problem number three, given a one capacitor circuit with a single pole double throw switch, could you calculate the voltage across the capacitor for all time? And we have a six step algorithm for solving this kind of problem. So the first step is to formulate the equations. So we have a first order differential equation. Our initiating switch is at t equals zero. So our solution is some a plus b times e to the minus t over tau. Since the voltage across the capacitor cannot change instantaneously, we can use that as one of our conditions for solving for A and B. So the switch is in a, this position for a long time, we've reached steady state, so the capacitor is an open circuit. But because of the open circuit here, I have no current flowing. So the voltage across here is simply just equal to 16 volts. Or you can just do the Kirchhoff's voltage law here. I've got zero current here, and I've got zero current here. So that times the 4K gives me zero volts and zero volts. So the rise in voltage here would equal the drops, minus zero plus 16 minus zero. Then a switch switches at t equals zero. And we can take our equation then and say a plus b times e to the zero is equal to the value of the capacitor voltage at t equals zero plus, but it's also the same value at zero minus, that's equal to 16 volts. I have one equation here and two unknowns. My second is take a look at the capacitor again approaching steady state in my step four. So as T approaches infinity, really just five time constants, this becomes an open circuit again. And again, I have no current flowing in this loop, so the drop across this resistor is zero times 2K, and likewise zero times 4K. So the voltage across here is just simply gonna be the minus sign is here and the plus sign is here, so a minus 12 volts. Or if you don't like that, just go around the loop. The rise in voltage is our V, drop of zero, drop of minus 12, drop of zero minus 12 for a plus b times e to the minus infinity over tau that's just equal to a we can now solve for b do that in just a second find the thevenin resistance seen by the capacitor and this would be for t greater than zero so the switch is in this position i said all the independent sources equal to zero really disconnected from this part of the circuit but i do have a voltage source here so what i see looking back then is just 2k in series with 4k or 6k so times the 20 microfarads is 120 milliseconds well, we can find the solution to our problem. We had that a plus b was 16, a was minus 12, so b then is equal to 16 minus a minus 12 or 28. So our equation then would be a plus b times e to the minus t over tau, so minus 12 plus 28 times e to the minus t over 120 milliseconds. And this is true for t greater than or equal to zero. And so now we can put together our complete solution. t greater than or equal to zero, we had this expression, minus 12 plus 28 e to the minus t over 120 milliseconds, and the units here would be volts. And then for t less than or equal to zero, we found that the voltage across the capacitor was 16 volts. If 20 points for this solution and five for this one, you can break this down into pieces if you'd like, but I give five points for this, five points for this, and five points for this, and another five points if you put the equation together. And this is problem number three. Problem number four is a multi-inductor circuit with a single pole single throw switch. Could you find the current in this one millihenry inductor for all time? Even though I've got multiple inductors here, I could represent this by a single inductor whose value would be one millihenry in series with the parallel combination of the four millihenry and the five. So product over sum, then added to one millihenry. And that turns out to be 3.22 millihenries have the same current flowing in that series combination, so I can still solve for my current in a one inductor problem. Again, we're gonna do our six step algorithm. So we'll formulate our equations. In this case, it's just gonna be I of T. It's gonna be some A plus B times E to the minus T over tau, since I'm starting at T equals zero. Let's find the value of the current in the inductor just before the switch changes state, and it'll be the same after it does that. So assume the switch is in this position for a long time, so it's an open circuit. The inductor has reached steady state, so it's a short circuit. And now I've got a loop right over here with three volts and three K. So the voltage across here has to be three volts because of the short circuit, bringing this point back over here. So the current that flows in here then would be three volts divided by three K or one milliamp. Step three then is to have the switch change state, but the current in the inductor cannot jump instantaneously. So that has to equal A plus B times E to the zero, which is just equal to one. So it's just A plus B. 
So one equation, two unknowns. Step four is to get my second constraint, and that is to again look at t approaching infinity, or five time constants. The switch has been closed for a long time. The inductor becomes a short, and now I've got a two source circuit. Let's solve for the current in the short circuit. A lot of ways you could do this. I did a source transformation here to put everything in parallel. So I got a 3k in parallel with a current source whose value is three volts divided by 3k or one milliamp. So with the short circuit here, we're forcing zero volts across the resistors. So all of this current and this current has to flow into here. Because with zero volts here, there's zero current. So the current in the inductor then is the sum of these two, one milliamp plus the 12 milliamps, so 13 milliamps. And now solve for our value of B. Before we do that, let's find the Thevenin resistance. What all the independent sources set equal to zero. So I had a voltage source here and a current source here, and which is in the state for T greater than zero. And looking back, then I see a 3K in parallel with a 2K. So the product over the sum is 1.2K. My time constant then is L over R Thevenin. It was a 3.22 millihenry equivalent inductance divided by 1.2K is 2.68 microseconds. I can solve for my equation, E greater than zero, plus B was one milli, A was equal to 13, so B is equal to minus 12. A plus B, E to the minus T over tau, 13 milli minus 12 milli, E to the minus T over 2.68 microseconds, and the units here would be amperes. This is true for T greater than or equal to zero. For T less than or equal to zero, we found that the current was equal to one milliamp. If 20 points here and five points here gave five for the 13, five for the 12, and five for the time constant, and an additional five for putting the equation together. And this is problem four of exam three. The next exam is the final exam in the course. It'll cover all of the material in the course.